Okay, we're recording. All right, so we're going to talk about 8.6. 8.6 binomial. Make sure I get the title right here. The binomial theorem. IAL theorem. Okay. All right. So we're going to talk about um, factorials. So I want to talk about factorials first. No, I don't. I will in a minute, though. First thing I want to talk about is Pascal's triangle. Pascal's triangle. Okay. So Pascal's triangle looks something like this. Is have a, a one on the top. The second row, we have a one, a two, and a one. Third row, we've got a one, a three, three and a one. Oh, this isn't lining up very well. Uh, here, I'm going to put that over there. That's going to look funny. I wish if I weren't using Excel, this would look a little nicer. And then the next one's going to be one, four, six, Four, one. Okay. And so this is what's known as Pascal's triangle. I wonder if I should move that over. Okay. I'm going to move this over too, actually. Maybe that'll make it look a little bit better. Okay, but the idea here is with Pascal's triangle, if I went one more, still in the wrong place. If I went one more, you're going to have ones on your diagonals. Say that again. Um, I'm just looking at the book too. After the one, would there be another row of two ones? So oh, is that why? Oh, there is a. I guess I missed a row. That's why I'm off. Sorry. No, that's good. Usually we ignore that one one thing because it doesn't help. Maybe if I do it this way, then I'm going to put gaps. Then it'll look better. Yeah, this is this is actually I'm glad you said that because this is going to make my triangle look better. Yeah, I'm just going to put that over here. Because I couldn't figure out why my triangle wasn't lining up because I no, that second row you can kind of ignore in a way, but um, OK, <clears throat> so this is Pascal's triangle. Essentially, you've got ones on the outside. And these numbers in the middle are the sum of, in this case, the 1 plus the 1 equals the 2. Okay? The 1 plus the 2 equals the 3. The 2 plus the 1 equals the 3. Uh, then to the next row, 1 plus 3 equals the 4. 3 plus 3 equals the 6. 3 plus 1 equals the 4. If we go to the next row, 1 plus 4 equals 5. 4 plus 6 equals 10. That's going to be, there we go. I'm glad that 6 plus 4 equals 10. And 4 plus 1 equals 5. Okay? So the idea here is with Pascal's triangle, you can keep going on forever. Okay? And um, now the problem is if you get down to the seventh or the eighth row, it, you know, you don't want to keep drawing this triangle down here. Um, and so um, that's what leads to factorials. Okay. Now factorials, 
I'm going to pull this up here for a second. Um, you're going to like it if I do this. But the idea with a factorial is, if in parentheses, I'm going to put an N and a K. And a lot of times we say that N choose K. That's how you would say that. Um, and so, for example, oh, let's also talk about factorials. Um, factorials are often read as, written as N exclamation point. Okay. So the idea here is if I, I had um, six choose two, okay, then normally you would write that as a, in parentheses, six choose two. I can't draw big parentheses in Excel very well, okay? But the idea here is if I have six, um, six choose two, essentially what that means is six factorial over two factorial, okay? Now, so in this case, 6 factorial is going to equal 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Okay, so all you do with a factorial is you count in reverse and you multiply this together. So if I were to put an equal sign in front of this, 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is 720. So that would be six factorial. And of course, two times one factorial, you can all do in your heads. Two times, oops, two times one is simply two, okay? So if I had uh, a factorial of nk, if this was n choose k in parentheses, and I can't make that parentheses, 720 divided by two is simply 360. That divided by that is going to be 360. And so the idea here is you can figure out these values here in Pascal's triangle um, with factorials. Okay. So the where this comes in handy, let's say that I have A plus B here. We'll do a simple one here raised to the second power, okay? Now, you probably know that that's simply a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Hopefully, everybody knew that before they came to class today, okay? And the idea here with this is I can just take these coefficients here, and that will be my coefficients for my binomial expansion. And so the idea here is if I do a plus b raised to the fifth power, okay, now since I have that here, I can pull this out here, and I know I can expand um, this, and so I know what all the coefficients are going to be, okay? So in this case, I'm going to have a squared with a, which, a coefficient of 1 plus 5 or I didn't mean to put a squared, a to the fifth. a to the fifth plus 5a to the fourth times b plus 10a cubed b squared plus 10a squared b squared, I say, b to the third power, except for I put a 10, but I meant an a, okay, plus 5a, I said five. number lock's not working, that's why I did that, 5a b to the fourth power plus b to the fifth power. So the nice thing is, if you know Pascal's triangle, this works out really well. And so you can foil this out in your head in basically one step. Now the problem arises is what if I do A times B, or A plus B to the, let's say the seventh power, okay? Well, I guess I could keep going with Pascal's triangle and I could figure that out. 
or I could use the binomial formula, okay? And so the binomial formula, binomial formula basically says you can figure out any coefficient, coefficient can be calculated as, and then this is where I need this formula here. They're using R instead of K, so I'll tell you what, I'll do that this time. Okay, so N choose R equals N factorial over N, excuse me, R factorial N minus R factorial, okay? So this is what's known as a combination. Combination, okay? If you take um, my statistics class, especially Math 2040, um, you'll learn about combinations and permutations, and you will see this formula a lot because it's used a lot in statistics. Um, we're not going to worry about permutations. We're just going to worry about combinations. And so, um, so that's your formula there. So, um, so as we do this, let's 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 foil out a plus b to the seventh. So the idea here is the first coefficient is always going to be one. So one, in fact, that's why that's always the outside of of Pascal's triangle. So the first one's going to be a to the seventh, okay? And this is where I'm trying to decide if I want to use my pencil or my thing here. Um, so, I think I'm going to use my pencil, even though it's so big, okay? All right, so this is your formula that you're going to want to remember, the N choose R. Um, I'm going to make this bigger, okay? So let's I'm going to create a new thing here. Let's say that I want to um, foil out a, a plus b raised to the seventh power. That's not on my Pascal strangle. So the idea here is, I'm going to use my finger here. So essentially, I'm going to have a, a to the seventh. I'm going to have a to the sixth times b, a to the fifth times b squared, a to the fourth, b to the third, et cetera, et cetera, okay? I won't write them all out now. But the idea here is we can use the binomial theorem to figure out the coefficients. So the coefficient for the first one is gonna be seven choose zero. And then the second one's gonna be seven choose one 7 choose 2, 7 choose 3, etc. And so we're going to keep going. Okay, so let's talk about 7 choose 0. Okay, according to my formula, that's going to be 7 factorial over 0 factorial, 7 factorial. Okay, now I forgot to mention 0 factorial. I'll do it this way. 0 factorial, you would think that equals 0, and we're going to say, no, that equals 1, because we need that to be 1. <laughs> so that's the exception to the rule. 0 factorial equals 1, and the reason why is by definition, because we said so, because we need it to say so, okay? And so in this case, essentially, you're going to have 7 factorial divided by 7 factorial so this is going to be zero, excuse me, one divided by zero factorial. I need zero factorial to equal one so that I can get a, a value. And so this first coefficient for the a to the seventh term is going to be a one, okay? The second one is going to be seven over one, seven choose one, which is seven factorial over one factorial, six factorial. So whenever you're doing this, the denominator 
is always going to add up to the numerator. Okay. Now this is going to be so seven fact. So I could rewrite seven factorial as seven times six factorial. Okay. Divided by six factorial. And then the nice thing about that is the six factorials cancel. The one factorial is of course one. So seven divided by one is going to be seven. So your first coefficient is going to be seven. Okay. I'm going to jump back to. Why, why did you put the six in there again? Sorry, I got kind of lost there. Okay. I'm going to go back to my spreadsheet here because I think it's a little bit easier. Okay. Okay. So um, here's what I'm going to do. We're going we're gonna to foil out the um, A plus B to the seventh. In fact, I'm going to do it on a new page. So I'm going to foil out A plus B to the seventh power. Okay, and what I'm going to do is, so this is going to be a to the seventh. I'm going to give myself a gap and I'm going to go a to the sixth times b. And then I'm going to do a to the fifth times b squared. And then I'm going to go a to the fourth times b to the third. And then I'm going to do a to the third times b to the fourth. And then a squared times b to the fifth. And then a to the first or just a times b to the sixth. And then finally b to the seventh. Okay. Now well, the idea here is we don't we don't want to write out pascal's triangle every time although we could pascal's triangle works very good so landon go ahead and say your question so as you're foiling it out each of the degrees is always going to equal the degree of the original equation like with your a to the seventh but then you have a to the sixth b essentially the degree of b is yeah is one. so your a's, that's, 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 your a's are going to count down and your B's are going to count up. But they're always going to equal seven, or at least the degree of the original equation, or the exponent of the original equation. So that's right? a little bit of a trick question there, because we're going to do harder ones than this. Oh, I'm man. going to say yes for now, but we are going to do something that's harder than that. OK? Well, of course. <laughs> All right. All right. So now I need to figure out the coefficients, OK? So the coefficients, and I can't draw those parentheses, so I'm just I'm going to ignore them for now. But the so this is going to be the um, the the factorial notation or the combination formula. So this is going to be seven choose seven choose zero. This one's going to be seven choose one. This one's going to be seven choose two. Seven choose three. Seven choose four. 7 choose 5, 7 choose 6, and 7 choose 7. Okay? Now, the way this works is, so I'm going to ignore the variables for a minute. I'm just trying to figure out what the factors are. So this is going to be 7 factorial divided by 0 factorial 7 factorial. Okay, underline that so it looks like a fraction. Well, the sevens are going to cancel. Okay, so um, so that's going to give me one on the top and zero factorial. And we said that zero factorial was one. And so in this case, your coefficient for your a to the seventh term is going to be one. And normally we don't write that. We just write a to the seventh. A to the seventh. Okay. Now let's go here. We're going to write 7 factorial over 1 factorial 6. Now, of course, you can type this in your calculator. You should have a, a factorial button or an exclamation point button on your calculator. Now, here's what I want to say, though. Let's say you didn't bring your calculator. And I know that happens to people a lot. So I could rewrite 7 as 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 
or I could write it as seven times six factorial, okay? Now the advantage to writing that as seven times six factorial is now my six factorials cancel, right? So my six factorials cancel, I'm left with a seven on the top, and I'm left with one factorial, and of course one factorial is just one. So seven divided by one is simply seven. Seven a to the sixth power, b to the first power, or just plain old b, okay? So now I've got my second coefficient here, okay? So this is me kind of building out Pascal's triangle without building it, okay? Then I'm gonna go to seven factorial over two factorial, five factorial, okay? Now, of course you can type that in your calculator just fine, but let's pretend I forgot my calculator and so I can't remember. And so I'm gonna go seven times six times five factorial, okay? Because remember factorials are just counting backwards, right? So now my five factorials cancel, and I'm left with 42 on the top and two on the bottom. Two factorial is two times one, which is just two. So I've got seven times six is 42 divided by two is 21, okay? So I know that my third term is going to be 21 a to the fifth b squared, okay? Then I'll do it again. So I'm gonna write this as seven times six, whoops, times six times five times four factorial over three factorial, four factorial, okay? So the whole reason I did that was because I forgot my calculator, but I know that four factorial divided by four factorial is gonna cancel. Um, now, let's think about three factorial. I could write three factorial as three times two times one times four factorial. Okay, so the four factorials cancel. I don't need to worry about those. Three, t three factorial is really six. So three factorial is six, and I've got a six on the, on the top and bottom now. So the six cancels with the six on the bottom. So now I'm left with just seven times five, which I can do in my head is 35. Okay, I have a to the fourth b, okay. Now I've got seven over four factorial. So I can rewrite this as seven factorial, or I could, well, instead of seven factorial, seven times six times five times four factorial over three factorial, or over four factorial, four factorial times three factorial. Well, you'll notice that, that's, that these two terms are exactly the same now. And in fact, the nice thing about Pascal's triangle is everything repeats, okay? So now I don't have to calculate this again. I know this is gonna be another 35. A to the third, B to the fourth, Okay, I know that this one's gonna repeat, so I don't, it's gonna be the same thing as this one here. So this is gonna be 21 a to the uh, second power, b to the fifth power. This one here, seven over six factorial is gonna be the same as that one there. So this is gonna be seven times a b to the sixth. And finally, seven factorial divided by seven factorial is one. I can put the one there, A, no, there's no A more in it, B to the seventh, okay? So I've now just foiled out A, B to the seventh, A plus B to the seventh, okay? Does that make sense? Okay. Now, this goes to Landon's question because he was thinking ahead, okay? What if uh, I'm starting? To, I'm going to start using real numbers now, okay? Instead of just a and b. And in fact, let me see if I can pick a good one here. 
Oh, this is a good one here. You guys are going to love this. Okay. So let's say, and this is a good test question, by the way. Let's say that I want to foil, I have 2x plus y raised to the 20th power. Okay. Now you guys are not going to want to write out Pascal's triangle for 20 rows, are you? Probably not. Okay. And let's say that I want the x, the fifth term. Okay. The coefficient. Well, I want the coefficient, coefficient. I can't spell that. Whatever. Coefficient of the x to the fifth term. Okay. All right, so the idea here is I don't want to write out, I think it's going to be 21 terms, okay? I want the x to the fifth term, okay? Well, the x to the fifth term is also going, well, let me back up a second. Let's say what a equals and what b equals. Is going to equal 2x in this scenario, and y and b is going to equal y. Okay. So when I'm looking at the x to the fifth term, really what I'm looking at is I want the 2x, I want that whole thing raised to the fifth term. And I'm going to have the y is, so your exponents are going to equal 20. So if x is to the fifth, y is going to be to the 15th term. Does that make sense? Okay. Notice on the last one here, if you look at the exponents, the exponents always add up to seven. So I'm adding a to the seventh, b to the zero power, so that's seven. a to the sixth, b to the first, six plus one is seven. a to the fifth, b squared, five plus two is seven. Okay. So these are always going to add up. Okay. So if I'm taking the x to the fifth term, okay, x to the fifth, y is going to be the 15th. It's going to add up to 20 in this case. Okay. Now I've got to figure out my coefficient. My coefficient is going to be 20. And then the bottom number is going to be 5. 20 choose 5. Okay. So in this case, it's going to be 20 factorial divided by 5 factorial times 15 factorial. Okay, now let's say that I forgot my calculator, which you certainly do not want to do on this test. I can type that in my calculator and I can get the answer. Um, having said that, well, it's not going to matter in our class. I will tell you that in my statistics classes, sometimes we would get factorial so big that um, it will blow up your calculator and it will say error because the number is too big. And so sometimes you still need to do this technique. So 20 factorial can be written as 20 times 19 times 18 times 17 times 16 times 15 factorial. Okay. Now, of course, I did that so that I could cancel out the 15 factorial on the bottom. Okay. Now, I can also write this as 5 times four times three times two times one, okay? Now, the cool thing about this is the 15 factorials cancel, so I'm not gonna worry about that. Five times four is 20. So now I've got simply nine, those cancels, 19 times 18 times 17 times 16 over the, the five, I've got three times four, three times two times one, three times two times one. 3 times 2 times 1 is 6. 6 goes into 18 three times, so I'm left with 19 times 6 times 17 times 16. Okay? Oops, that's supposed to be times, not divide. So, you could really do that one in your, um, on a piece of paper if you had to, um, but now I can do this. And so what I know is my 
coefficient is going to be 31,008, okay? So this is going to be 31,008 times, now I've got to have two to the fifth, <laughs> because this two is raised to the fifth, x to the fifth, y to the 15th, okay? And so two to the fifth, I believe is 32, let me make sure, two to the fifth is 32. So I'm going to take that 32, I'm going to multiply it by the 31,000, 32 times 31,008 is 992,256 x to the fifth, y to the 15th. Okay, so I just found the coefficient for the x to the fifth term, and that's the answer right there. Pretty cool, huh? And I didn't have to multiply this out or figure out Pascal's triangle. I got on the, I didn't get the same number. I didn't get the 31,000. I got 15,504. Well, let me make sure I didn't do it. So I will use the Excel function here. Factorial function is 20. 20 factorial and factorial five, which is 120 and factorial 15. Let me make sure I did it right, but I'm pretty sure I did is that number. And so if I take the numerator divided by the denominator, which is this times that. Oh, you're right. I did, well, how did I mess up? It is 15,000. Oh, 54, 15, 504. You did 19 times 6 times 17 times 16. Nineteen times six times seventeen times sixteen. Yeah, that's what I was supposed to do. I think it's supposed to be nineteen times three times seventeen times sixteen. Oh, that's what it was. Three. There we go. Times seventeen times sixteen. Yes, that is. That's what I. Yeah, I I messed up there. Easier to do on paper. Yeah. Okay. So so fifteen. Th so thank you, Fidencio. That was the correct answer. So sure. the coefficient is fifteen five zero four. We're going to multiply that by 2 to the 5th, which is 32, and we're going to get 496,128. So thank you for speaking up there, Fidencio. I appreciate that. Okay? So moral of the story, don't forget your calculator. <laughs> but uh, I will tell you, I, uh, some of you are probably going to have to take statistics and... Um, I always try to blow up your calculator where I give you a factorial so big it won't blow up. Excel actually handles larger factorials. I think it takes like 200 factorial before it blows up. Yeah, see, that didn't work. But I think it'll do 100. I think most calculators will not do 100 factorial. So sometimes you still have to learn this technique here that I, that I showed you. But uh, anyway, so... All right, so homework is going to be on 8.6. So that'll be due tomorrow, and I will post the review today for sure. And so we'll have a review tomorrow and test on Thursday. Once again, if you take it during our regularly scheduled time between 9 and 10 a.m., I'll give you an extra 5%. And um, it'll be 10 questions, just like all the other tests. It's just nice. We can ask you more questions about chapter eight and seven than I normally do. So any questions before I let you go? Nope. Okay. Well, um, I will let you guys go then and see you all tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Party hard.